Five simple but effective pronunciation hacks that will improve your English pronunciation in just a few weeks. Let me show you how. Ah, pronunciation. It can be embarrassing, right, when native speakers don't understand you. Believe me, I know, right? I remember the first time I walked into a French shop on my first visit to France, a bread shop, and I walked in confidently and said, Chauveurs, deux baguettes, s'il vous plaît. And the shopkeeper was like, Pardon? <laughs> what? And I repeated, and he didn't understand. Fortunately, the man next to me did understand me. He spoke English and French. And he said to the shopkeeper, Lui, il, il veut deux baguettes. And the shopkeeper said, Ah, oh, lo, il faut le dire. Of course, he should have said so. Um, right, but that was the problem, that my pronunciation was so bad, there was no communication. And it's partly my fault, but, you know, at school, we did very little work on speaking and pronunciation. Many course books don't focus on pronunciation. It's often at the end of the queue, right? The last thing you learn. And so, ironically, in communication, pronunciation is hugely important. If you, pronun if you, if you can pronounce clearly, it doesn't matter if you make some vocabulary mistakes or grammar mistakes. People can understand you generally, right, by and large. But if your pronunciation is bad, people can't understand anything. It's terrible. And it's important in your IELTS speaking exam. It takes 25% of your mark. It's also one of the hardest things to change because you've had this habit for years of pronouncing this way. That said, I'm going to show you today a very simple way that you can change your pronunciation. Three things you need to do. Number one, focus on certain key areas. Number two, repeat 10 minutes every day for three weeks. Number three, extend these techniques to wider language and to more examples. So in this video, I'm going to show you five areas you can focus on. Um, you can follow me in the video and then later you can download the PDF and the MP3 and every day for three weeks, just 10 minutes, repeat the exercises. At the end of the three weeks, you'll see there's a difference and then you can start to extend to wider language and more examples. I challenge you to try this and see if you can make a significant change in your pronunciation, right? Let's begin with that first area to focus on. Okay, number one, link phrasal verbs. You'll remember, maybe, phrasal verbs is where you have a verb plus a preposition or an adverbial particle and well, let's take an example, right? Some examples. Have a look at these. How would you pronounce these? Okay, you could say get off, take out, clear up. That's fine, but you can also link, right? You can say get off, take out, clear up, okay? You don't have to link them, but you can. And linking is a very powerful pronunciation feature that you can use. It happens when a word ends in a consonant and the next word begins with a vowel. Now, many verbs end in a consonant and prepositions often begin with a vowel sound. So you have that opportunity to link, right? Let's put these into small phrases. Practice linking. Try these, first of all. Okay, repeat with me. Toff. Get off the train. Nice. The next one. Count. Take out the rubbish. Great. The next one. Rup. 
clear up this mess. Wonderful. Let's move on. Right, number two, use word stress. Now, each word in English has a certain number of syllables or sounds. For example, beautiful, right, has beautiful, three syllables. The problem is many students put equal stress on each syllable. It is a beautiful day. Mm, the problem is, of course, there is just one syllable that we stress above the others. With beautiful, it's the first. Beautiful. Beautiful. Right? What about this word? Where is the stress? On the second. Important. Important. Right? What about this word? It's on the third. Afternoon. Afternoon. Right? So it's really important to, to know where the stress is and to really mark that stress. How do you know? Well, when you listen, listen and notice the stress. You can also check up or look up the word. Look up. Look up. Remember? Look up the word in a dictionary. And most good dictionaries will tell you where the primary stress is. Okay. And do remember, when we stress a word, we actually do three things. One is we make it longer. Beautiful. We raise the pitch a little. Beautiful. And often we increase the volume. It's beautiful. Do all three. A really good tip when you're practicing at home with individual words is really exaggerate. Exaggerate the stress on the word. Then when you're speaking normally, it will sound just right. So you can change from saying, it's a beautiful afternoon, to it's a beautiful afternoon. Much better, right? Great. Next. Okay, number three, listen for missing sounds. Where have they gone? You know, sometimes in English we drop a sound or the sound disappears. Um, in teaching, this is called elision. Elision. Actually, I was going to call this section, listen for elision, but it was too hard to pronounce. <laughs> it's a pronunciation video. Okay. Listen for elision. Listen for missing sounds. For example, right, how do you pronounce this? Okay, normally we don't say, I can't go. It, it's very slow, it sounds strange, right? We would say, I can't go, I can't go. That T sound is dropped. And what happens, the, the most common elision sounds are the T and the D, and it happens when they appear in between consonants, right? So in this example, I can't go. You've got the N, the T, and the G. I mean, try pronouncing NTG. It's just not possible. So we make life easy in English, and we drop that T sound. I can't go. I can't go. Try. That's it. Let's look at some other very common words and how this elision happens with them. And then later, after three weeks, you can extend this to other words and areas. Okay, let's take the word must. Okay, with must, it ends in a T. It has an S before, and if the next word begins with a consonant, we often drop the T. So instead of saying, you must see this, we actually say, you must see this. You must see this. T disappears. You must see this. Nice. You try to say this one. I must go. There's no T sound. I must go. Okay, another common word. Next. To say this, we would say next week. 
the T disappears. It's so difficult to say next week, next week. You try this one. The next day. Drop the T. The next day. Excellent. Nice. Now, a very interesting uh, tip for your listening skills. Have you sometimes noticed that when proficient speakers or even native speakers, when they say the simple past tense, sometimes it sounds like the present simple. For example, you might hear somebody say, yeah, I watched TV yesterday. That sounds like the simple, but it's the past. I watched TV yesterday. Look carefully. I watched TV. You've got the ch, the d and the t. So the d sound of the simple past is dropped. I watched TV yesterday. Or I cooked dinner last night. I cooked dinner last night. Sounds like the present, but it's the past. I cooked dinner. You've got the the k, the t, and the d. So the middle t sound is dropped. I cooked dinner yesterday, or I cooked dinner last night. Can you see that? I mean, can you hear that? <laughs> Interesting, right? Let's move on. Now, just before we go on to point number four, I want to tell you how to practice and improve your pronunciation, right? Now, do you remember at the start of the video, I said there are three things you can do. Focus, repeat, and extend. Hopefully with this video, you will focus and understand on five different areas of pronunciation. And then how do you practice? Easy peasy. Click on the link in the description below. Download the free PDF and the MP3 file. Read through the PDF and then just practice with the MP3 file. Practice the five pronunciation points. And then repeat every day the same thing for three weeks. If you can, my friend. <laughs> if you can and when you do, you will notice a big improvement in your pronunciation. I would love to find out. So do come back and let me know. Okay, right now, let's move on to point number four. Okay, let me begin with a question for you. How do you pronounce these words? Now you may have said, to, for, do, you, and. And that's fine. And that's correct. However, most of the time, probably 90% of the time, that's not what we say. We would say t, f, d, y, an. And that is because most of the time, these words are not stressed. And when they're not stressed, we use the schwa sound. The what sound? The schwa sound. The schwa sound is this. Uh, uh. You just <clears throat> relax your mouth. <clears throat> the tongue is in the middle of the mouth and very relaxed and just go, uh, uh. Like when we say a lot, a lot of people, uh, a lot. That is the schwa sound, <coughs> excuse me. It's the most common sound in English. Now, there are a bunch of words in English that have a weak form and a strong form. And when we use the weak form, we usually use the schwa sound. The most common words are prepositions, like to, for, for per, and personal pronouns, right? There are others, but we can just look at these today, right? So let's, so going back to our example of T-O, to, the strong form is to, the weak form is t. Okay, that's the schwa because it's unstressed. Let's have a look at some real examples. What time is it? It's 10 to 2. We don't say it's 10 to 2. No, 
it's 10 to 2. Got it? That's because we stress 10, we stress 2, we do not stress T-O. It's 10 to 2. You try this one. It's 5 to 4. What about the word F-O-R here? It's for you. We stress the U, we don't stress the four. It's for, it's for you. Can you say that? Nice, now try this one. This is for her. This is for her. F, f. This is for her. You can hear the stress on the her, right? Next, do. Here, we would probably not say, do you like it? But we would say, do you, do you like it? Do you, do you like it? Do you like it? You try this one. Do you want it? Do you, do you want it? Stress on the want. Do you want it? Right. Now you can see with this weak form or the schwa, how this is going to help your listening skills because you may think that Native speakers just eat all the words and they disappear. It's not. They're using the weak form, right? Final one, my favorite food. What is this? It's not fish and chips. It's fish and chips. Fish, stress. Chips, stress. And fish and chips. You try this one. Neat and tidy. I'm linking as well, remember? Neat and ten. Neat and tidy. My room is so neat and tidy. Lovely. Well done. Let's move on. Right. So use diphthongs. <laughs> what on earth is a diphthong? A diphthong is a vowel sound. Right? Do you remember vowels in English? A, E, I, O, U, and so on. There are many vowel sounds in English. Um, diphthongs, right, is where actually you have two sounds together and you move or you slide from one sound to another. For example, O. It's O. Okay. In many languages, you don't have diphthongs or you have one or two. So, for example, in Spanish, um, there, aren't, there aren't any diphthongs. So, whereas I would say, yes, I know, a Spaniard, a Spaniard would say, yes, I know, I know. It's a short vowel sound. But in English, there's that slide, I know. And if you can start to use diphthongs, not only will you sound much, much more English or British or American or Australian, um, it'll just... It'll separate you from the rest of the other students. So there are eight diphthongs in English. I'm just going to focus on three very simple ones today and show you how they work. OK, the first one is the O sound, as I mentioned. Right now, this begins with a a, uh, the schwa, a, uh, o, and you finish by sliding and rounding your lips. So it's a, uh, o, oh, o. Oh. Can you see there's a slide, there's a movement? O, oh, o. Oh. And you'll find this in words like go, no, so, right? Now do be careful. It's important the sound doesn't come from the length. It comes from the rounding of the lips. Some students over-exaggerate the length and they sound a bit strange. They go, oh, I know, I'm going to go to the show. And it's over-exaggerated. It's not the length, it's the, the rounding. So it's, oh, go, no, I'm going to go to the show. Sounds much better, okay? The next one is A as in day, today. Um, a begins with a e eh sound and it finishes with a i. So look at the shape of my mouth. E, eh, i, a, 
Can you see the slide? A. You can find this in day, say, may, and so on. Okay, third one is I. I. Um, and this begins with a a sound, very open, a, and then it slides to the i again. I, a, i, I, I. Can you see the slide? I. And it words like hi, hi, my, tie. I don't have a tie. Okay. Great. That's it. Those are the diphthongs you can practice. Um, how do you practice? Well, remember, it's easy. Just go in the description, download the PDF and the MP3 file. You can read the PDF as a guide, but then when you're practicing, don't read aloud. Listen and repeat. So remember, you're focusing on these five areas, repeating the five areas every day, just 10 minutes, the same thing every day for three weeks. Then later, when you notice the difference, you feel more confident, you can extend to other words and phrases. So listen, step up. You must try. Have a go every day for three weeks. Hey, did you notice? I just used all five pronunciation hacks in that sentence. Did you spot them? Step up. You must try. Have a go every day for three weeks. Get it? If you found this video useful, then listen, you should watch the next video, which will really help you improve your listening skills. That's it for me. Take care, my friend. See you soon. Bye-bye.